Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tammy from AFM Limited. And uh, I know that almost uh, most of you are the experts from construction industry. So today, I'm not going to talk about construction. Instead, I'll talk about something after construction, but very close to it, which is facility management. So my topic is rejuvenate the existing buildings and facilities, the integration of BIM, GIS, and IoT in facility management. My presentation uh, is mainly about these four parts. First, the challenges that we are facing in operating existing building and facility. And the second one is how to revitalize the existing building information. And the third one, making the existing building smarter. And the last one is digital twin of the real world. So, before talking about the challenges we are facing when operating existing buildings, I would like to talk about three main challenges we are facing related to buildings. The increasing population, high energy consumption, and the aging of existing buildings. With the increasing in population in the world, Hong Kong is expected to have 8 million people by uh, 2025, which is after six years. But the land resources is limited. Not only land resources, but also energy resources. In Hong Kong, building accounts for about 90% of the city's electricity usage and aging of existing buildings. This is the main building of the University of Hong Kong, established in 1912. Maintenance is carried out continuously to ensure the upkeep of the building. So the existing buildings are facing many challenges, like rising energy costs, conservation restrictions, high costs for modernization, and eldest, uh, and eldest buildings lose their functionality and often turn to ruin if not carefully maintained. So these all related to the challenges we are facing in operating existing buildings. So the cost control, different roles will have different concerns about it. Owners would like to keep the building operating with a lower cost. Clients always request for more services with increasing quality, while the staffs want to have more work being completed effectively. However, they may not work as expected or not easy to achieve the goal. So uh, like we want to turn off the electricity when nobody inside the room, but people always forget to do it or do it when somebody is working inside. Another one is record keeping, like daily operation record, meeting minutes, stored and SS image. They are all needed in building operation, but most of the process are still carried out manually and the information is fragmented or even wrong information. And another challenge is about emergency response and uh, safety. It is n always necessary to have quicker response time to emergency requests while some critical systems and equipment should keep running or getting repaired instantly, it failed. So nowadays, reactive maintenance and the preventive maintenance are carried out throughout the entire building life cycle. However, it is not the optimum maintenance methodology, and I'll propose a more cost-effective methodology in my presentation later. So, how to revitalize the existing building information. BIM, Building Information Modeling. I think almost everyone in this room knows BIM, and uh, most of you may know 
more than I do. So the key of the BIM methodology is to collaborate and to share information throughout the entire building life cycle to make sure the right information is shared with the right people in right form and at the right time. BIM has already involved in design and the construction stages. But it is just the tip of the iceberg. Facility management and the operation could be beneficial more from BIM. Look at this chart. With BIM approach as indicated by the red curve and comparing to the blue curve, there is huge saving opportunities, which is untapped yet. So BIM integrated facility management system is proposed. Facility management is a business domain that links people and a place together through defined business process with the available technology. And uh, this is the ubiquitous infrastructure. It is best uh, described with the terms anytime, anyone, anywhere, any device, any information, any services, and also affordable. So this is the framework. Uh, the framework includes mainly four layers and in the central is what we call BIM data bus. In the bottom layer is data gathering and the second layer is information store. And the third layer is BIM mapping for information sharing. Well, the top layer is the application layer. So in the first layer, data acquisition layer, it's about extract, load, and transform data from different sources by different methods. It is dynamic data capture. For example, we transform data from CCTV system into BIM model. And the second layer, Data warehouse layer will store and unify data like maintenance history, organization data, and cat drawings, etc., in a centralized platform. And the third layer, BIM mapping layer. In this layer, BIM works as a presentation tools for uh, processing, structuring, and organizing all the information to form the knowledge of the infrastructure. And the top layer, the smart application layer, the BIM data we gathered could provide support for different application usage and for all user requests, instructions, reports, and further enhancing the ability to take action and make decisions automatically. I just talked about the BIM integration facility uh, management system in a very high level. Now, I would down to earth talk about how to start BIM process for existing buildings. There are mainly four steps. The first step is information gathering. And uh, step two is BIM modeling. And step three is asset model and data input. And the last step is BIM to facility management system integration. So in the first step, information gathering, uh, you may need to prepare uh, before building the BIM model. These two questions may help. So where is your existing drawings? It is good to have CAD drawings, but for existing buildings, if some of the drawings are in PDF format, or even hard copy, you may need more effort. And you may also need to consider whether the joints are really as built. 
any renovation or change after the building is completed? We also use laser scanning as one of the methods to gather the spatial data. It will help to uh, complement the missing spatial data from the drawings. And besides laser scanning, photogrammetry could also uh, be used for reality capture. We can use 360 degree camera to capture the information, then use 3D reconstruction technology to build a scene like this one. You, may, uh, you can walk around the space in the viewer like this and even do some measurement. And it is also used for beam model verification by comparison. So now in step two, beam modeling. This is a model for a single floor include uh, slabs, walls, columns, stairs, doors, and windows. So can anyone suggest what is the LOD of this model? You know, BIM is always talking about fit for purpose modeling. So LOD is always needed to be defined before modeling work carrying out. So I would say the model is to uh, LOD 200, maybe LOD 300 for some area like uh, the exterior skin. So LOD is about how detailed the information has in the model. Actually, in facility management, we highly recommend you have all the LOD models from LOD 100 to LOD 400 or even 500. And I'll explain why in my later ex uh, presentation. Comparing to a beam project for new buildings, you can build a model like this very easily. This is the public health laboratory center in Shakib May. And you do not really need an LOD 500 model to start BIM and the facility management system integration. Actually, you already have some advantages with this model, including visualization, leverage model for renovations, and energy modeling potential. So the third step is putting the asset model and the data into BIM. In this step, you don't need to add all of the asset in the model, but focus on the asset that you are interested in or concerned. So we can start with those frequently maintained assets like air conditioner, chiller, uh, fan coils. And I don't think we need to include duct and the pipe routing in the first step. That is too much effort to make it correct because you may need to open the ceiling to track them. That would be a great effort. As for what type of information should be included in BIM for asset management use, the standard and the guidelines published by EMSD can be a quick start. In addition, like product catalog, maintenance manual, and the operation manual could be attached to the asset model. And the final step is to link the static beam data to the dynamic operation data within the uh, uh, facility management system. So we can use a middleware, a forge viewer, to show the beam model and the facility management system data. For example, when we want to make replacement, we don't need to inspect it on site. Instead, we can check the location of the equipment and the technical specification of it in the beam viewer. 
Also, the model can be used for energy analysis. This one shows uh, the energy analysis comparison before and after renovation. Now, once we have the beam and the facility management system integration, next step we are thinking is making the existing building smarter. So, we propose beam and the IoT integrated facility management system. IoT technology uh, connected objects together. So, what we can achieve with it is a beam based facility management system with remote sensing and remote control function. For example, with occupancy sensor in IoT, we can have an idea about uh, the space utilization, like the different percentage of the utilization rate of our reception, meeting room, and office rooms. And also for hotel room service, we can know whether the guests are in the room by using sensors and provide room cleaning service when the guests are not inside. And smart elevator. The elevator would stop at the floor based on the actual number of queuing people. This will give a better user experience with less waiting time and much energy saving. And it is also helpful in energy consumption management. This is a B model. When integrating with IoT, we can check the real-time reading of the sensor. The, ob no, uh, the abnormal data can also be highlighted in the model. So we can check energy efficiency. And furthermore, we can also plot charts about electricity consumption by week, by month, or by year. And also, we can integrate with CCTV to monitoring the um, the, the real-time data, the real-time image in the model. So, integrated with IoT, what we want to achieve is predictive maintenance. This is a new type of maintenance methodology between reactive maintenance and the preventive maintenance. It is a methodology which help us predict the failure using the sensors and take actions automatically. For example, we have a, uh, an air conditioner in the room, and also we have temperature sensor, humidity sensor, and the power meter to monitoring. When we got high temperature and high humidity and high power meter readings, the system would detect the abnormal situation and would know that there may be something wrong with the air conditioner and that it would generate work order for inspection automatically. This chart compares the cost of preventive maintenance, reactive maintenance, and the predictive maintenance. We have to pay for repairing and the prevention in these three types of maintenance methods. And I mentioned before, I propose a more cost-effective maintenance methodology. That is predictive maintenance. Among these three types of methodologies, predictive maintenance has the lowest total cost. So for making the building smarter, there's a concept, a digital twin of the real world. So what is digital twin? This is an image of our real world. And this is what we build in the virtual world. Dr. Michael Greaves gave the definition of digital twin. It is the concept of a virtual digital equivalent to a physical artifact. 
When apply the digital twin concept to building or facilities, I would say it integrates GIS, BIM, and IoT technology together. So you can use a virtual model to connect to the real world. We have map tile technology in GIS, which renders the map based on different zoom levels. And the level of details of the map changes when I keep zooming in. This can also be applied in BIM, IoT, and GIS integrated facility management. So this is also in the Forge Viewer. And the model is from Lens Department. I just mentioned we need all LD models in beam facility management. And now I'll explain why. Just like the map tile technology in GIS, now I'll say this is a model with LD100. But when I keep zooming in, the LD will keep changing. When I zoom into a single building, the LD will change to 200. And when I get into a zoom, the LD will change to 300 or 400 with detailed assets and even pipe and dot network inside it. Facility management involves different parties. They have different focuses. Some of them may focus only the architecture of the buildings. They may satisfy with the LD200 model, while others may focus on the detailed assets like E and M assets which will need LD300 or 400 models. That's why I said we need all LD models in facility management. With the digital twin concept, we can achieve a lot in facility management, like space management. With occupancy sensor, the space occupancy can be displayed in B model. And we can do some something like uh, shortest path analysis for path funding in the building or even across the buildings. It also could be used in condition assessment. And the building operation will also be beneficial from it. For example, if someone reports the ceiling is leaking water, Really, we need to open the ceiling and check whether there's pipe inside and whether there's like cable trunk which could be affected near it. But now, when we have such a platform, we could check it easily in a mobile device to hide the ceiling and track the assets inside the beam model. Once the digital twin ubiquitous infrastructure is ready, AI-based building control and building operation will be the next step. And uh, that's all of my presentation.